look uh, here 71 72 and going up and up more and more with just few seconds of sunlight you can recharge the battery and keep an equivalent 50 watt motor working non-stop regime now the sky is clearing up a little and the battery is receiving let's see uh, the battery is receiving one amp and the voltage is increasing fast you can see with just one minute of sun the battery increases very fast and the motor doesn't stop this means that um, the motor can be used for irrigation in semi-desert areas like the northern region of Brazil a battery like this can move a motor with a 150 water pump and constantly irrigate a specific area with almost zero cost only the cost of the solar cell and a battery the battery can charge during the day and run the motor at night till the next day when just few minutes of direct sun are enough to recharge it again okay now this is the original fan you, as you can see here they have the same blade and now uh, we are using an in inverter there this inverter is connected to the solar panel and the battery so i would like you to pay attention on how it will be the difference in consumption between the two motors i'll put it to run now okay this is the first speed first speed is uh, spinning at 530 540 and 40 rpm something around that okay and the consumption look at the battery how the battery drops quickly very quickly the battery drops and, and the consumption is 47 watts consumption is 47 watts to run the motor at 500 like I said no the, the, the look the spin is dropping very fast now 480 477 72 70 which means this motor is consuming the battery extremely fast the battery and the solar panel and the solar panel cannot overcome the consumption of the battery now if I increase the velocity here for the second velocity which is supposed to be 850 now it's decreasing to 670 rpm with the consumption of 47 watts because uh, it's yeah. the maximum you can supply yeah the maximum you can supply is that you see so the solar panel plus the battery cannot keep the motor spinning with a regular fan much differently from what you observe with the capi motor in algumas comentários uh, the engineers have any comments about what we just saw yeah we are trying to make a, a group of motors for solar panels with the capi motor to how we can say to supply all the necessities for people in a house, for example. Right. So we need uh, movement, uh, light, uh, ventilation, and pumps to run, uh, to have your uh, self-dependent uh, house from everything. To, so, to, to step outside the electrical grid he's talking about. Yes, now. from outside the electrical grid and have a normal life. And uh, we are succeeding at the many motors in this in this sense. Né? So, falam português, isso é muito importante para eles. É, então, nós estamos desenvolvendo, então, uh, vários motores para fazer uma casa independente de, uh, da, da rede elétrica. E como, por exemplo, a gente precisa de movimento, precisa de luz, de, de bombas para água, de ventilação. E estamos em, em fim de terminar esse desenvolvimento até, acho que até o fim do ano, para ter motores viáveis para painéis solares nesse sentido. Então, agora temos uma pergunta que vem da Finlândia. 
actually, and this for my country, Canada, is very important too. If the Kepi motor is a cap capturer and generator of energy, is it possible it could be used for heating of houses, etc., which is a great problem in the northern hemisphere? Say, o Kepi motor é um captador gerador de energia. Ele pode ser usado para aquecimento das casas, etc., que é um grande problema no hemisfério norte. How would you respond to this? Yeah. Como vocês vão responder para isso? Imagine directly use the, to use the capi motor directly to generate energy in order to to waste it in a resistance and heat up. This is not the way we do. Because, as I told, electricity we do not see as energy but waste of energy. We use the other way. You can use the cap motor as a reverse compressor to refrigerate systems. You can use a heat pump, use gases with that. You can compress gases and with this exchange in heat, heat exchange, you can heat up water and have all of your needs. Suppose if you are living in Siberia, for example, or Canada. <laughs> Well, a few, few minutes of sun, like we, we saw here, if you use some uh, panels, can make, uh, you can charge a battery, a very small battery, and make this battery run a capi motor, which would work together with a heat pump and heat up the water for your, all of your needs. Because to heat uh, water, it's 4.5 times more efficient than using resistances like we use here in Brazil, like uh, shower units using electricity. So it's very, very feasible. Okay. In Portuguese. Okay. Bom, como eu tinha explicado antes, nós não enxergamos a eletricidade como a melhor forma de energia. Na verdade, ela é uma perda de energia. Então, quando a gente pensa em aquecer água, nós não pensamos em aquecer através de eletricidade numa, dispensada numa resistência elétrica, que é o caso do chuveiro. Porque aí você gasta horrores em eletricidade. O chuveiro gasta aí 6 mil watts brincando. Né? Então, nós podemos fazer o mesmo trabalho usando um compressor de geladeira ao contrário, que são chamados os heat pumps, as é, bombas de calor. Com essa bomba de calor, ela é 4,5 vezes mais eficiente do que uma resistência de chuveiro. Então, nós poderíamos reduzir drasticamente o consumo de aquecimento de água, usando, por exemplo, em regiões muito frias, como a Sibéria ou mesmo o Canadá, alguns painéis solares que alimentariam uma bateria que mexeria, por sua vez, um cap motor acoplado a um compressor reverso, uma bomba de calor. E aí nós teríamos água abundante e quente para todo o inverno. Uma grande resposta para o nosso lado norte, o hemisfério norte. É uma muito boa resposta para nós, do norte. Vai ser muito interessante. Um pouco mais perguntas, meus amigos. Uh, maybe you should read that one, Cesar, in Portuguese, and we'll uh, try to translate it in English. We have two questions from the same person, it looks like. Uh, we have here a question from Ado, São Paulo. He would like, to, would like us to explain a little bit the question of the torque of the capi motor, how the torque is maintained, I understand. He says he has difficulty in understanding the energy consumed by this motor by one reason. Two reasons. Yeah, but he says just one here. Uh, Second. Ah, second. First, we need energy to start the process, right? And the second, the motor what, what needs to generate... Uh, if the motor can generate electricity too, yeah. So let's vamos falar in Portuguese. Poderiam explicar... Well, vocês, melhor para falar. É, o Ado, aqui de São Paulo, em português, faz a seguinte pergunta. Poderiam explicar a questão do torque versus o cap motor, né? Do cap motor. Eu tenho dificuldade em entender a energia consumida por esse motor por dois motivos. Primeiro, nós precisamos de uma energia para iniciar o funcionamento do motor, certo? E segundo, o motor pode gerar energia elétrica também. 